all right welcome back YouTube so today we're going to combine parts four and five of the must learn KQL series into one video so just so you know before we get started we're here at this point well after this video anyway and I did that just because it just kind of made sense to me so so the idea here with the search operator is how do we find uh, a specific piece of data without knowing what table it's in. So search operator will basically search across all of your uh, data that's in Sentinel or Log Analytics or whatever you're using it for. So if I do a shift enter, and in this case, I'm looking for something that hits on quarantine. So let's say I'm looking for um, any kind of quarantine action that happened in the last 24 hours or whatever. So I can see here that it came back with what 52 records. And if I look through here, I'll probably see quarantine somewhere. Yep, right there in the extended. So it looks like extended properties, threat status uh, is a quarantine or some other value. So let's see now this is where is the table name this is in the security alert table now you'll see the the cl here that just means it's a custom table that was imported into this probably imported into this log analytics workspace so don't worry about the cl all right so let's expand the uh the time here a little bit just so we get more records so in the last 30 days if we search for the same thing you can see we get 488 um, records so now how do i know where that particular data lives and then once i figure that out i can pare down my uh, query to be a little more efficient so if i add a distinct dollar sign table this is going to tell me where which table this this particular data set lives in and again we're searching on quarantine so I see that I have two tables here that I could potentially search for this data security alert or audit logs so given that let's look through both so if I do a search in then this bracket here is the table I want to look in Quarantined is what I'm searching for, and then I'm going to use 30 days just so I get more hits. Shift enter. So I, this is what I come back with, 460 records. And just for giggles, if I want to look in audit logs, just to kind of see how that compares. Actually, let's look in here. I think this has probably the information we're looking for, but let's look in the audit logs just in case. So I shift enter to run that. Mm, let's see here. Does this have the kind of information that I want? Where can I see quarantine? It looks like it's pretty close to the same information. I get more hits out of security alert. So this is what I'm going to go with to kind of better pare down. So if I want to pare that, um, that search down into a specific table, then I can look at my security alerts table and then add whatever uh, filters I want to filter on. So in this case, I only want to bring back anything that has quarantine in it and I want the last 30 days. And then, so this takes me down to 460 records. And then from here, I could further pare this down to oh, wrong key, control enter to go next space. And then I could project whatever specific information I wanted to bring out of this specific table. I don't know if these have any information. I'm just kind of showing you how you would do that. So that's how you'd pare down. And now I only have two tables. Now for a little bit of extra credit, first of all, let's run this again so I get my full data set. So if I click the arrow key, oops, I forgot to take the project out. Well, here's one other thing. So if I want to just remove that project statement, I can just comment it out and leave it there. Okay, so this gives me my full data set of what I think is useful data. So let's copy this again. 
and I'm sure we're going to get to this uh, as Rod goes through his series, but I'm going to show you here just because I think it's useful. So if I look through here, I can see that really the data that I'm, I think I'm interested in is probably this under extended properties. So this is probably what I want as far as information goes. So to pull that information out without knowing any KQL whatsoever, uh, I can utilize the console here hit this little radio or three ellipses and if I want to extend that column so I want to look at action taken maybe I want to look at back door give me the file path as well so now if I run this again shift enter then I can surface more meaningful set of data here so now I, ha I have my compromised entity I have uh, what was run on that endpoint category may not be of any interest but uh, and then I can see that all of these were blocked. And then I still have all the other data here that's to the right. If I just scroll to the right, that's the rest of the table. So if I want to only see the action taken, then I can do a project. And again, this is kind of extra credit, but we'll, I'm sure we'll get to this later on in the series. What is a compromised entity? Column. And now I'm going to use these three, the action taken, underscore category underscore and file path underscore so oops well this is one other thing if you click out and you want to get the um intellisense back control enter will give you the intellisense back so what i want action taken action taken column category column file path now if i run that this should just give me four columns of only the information that I think at this point to be useful. So there we go. I've got my compromise entity, which is essentially the endpoint name. What happened on each one of these? What category? And then the this actually tells me what was run to trigger this specific incident or log or whatever it may be. I think I hit everything. I probably didn't. Uh, so head over to Rod's blog to take a look at what he has probably more detail than I just went over there but anyway uh, thanks for following along and I will see you on the next one